Hello, I'm your everyday average Jonathan. Join me this week while I turn this, this, and this into this and this. Hello, I'm your everyday average Jonathan. I'm an ordinary guy with ordinary tools making extraordinary items. I'm a self-taught craftsman, an amateur blacksmith, and a novice woodworker. I have no professional training. I have a basic complement of tools that I've cobbled together over the years. My goal each week is to demonstrate that anyone with a basic set of tools, a lot of curiosity, a lot of hard-won knowledge, can build interesting items, outlandish projects, projects and items that you might have thought otherwise were out of reach for you. Each week, I start a new build process. I take you on the journey with me. I show you my perspective. I show you my process. I don't edit out any of my aha moments. I don't edit out any of my my mistakes. The items that I tend to build each week are fantastical in nature, whimsical, echoing times of a forgotten yore, if you will. Items like weapons and armor, furniture, structures, practical items that I use on my ranch here in Colorado. This week I will be building not one, but two metal flowers. One will be a combination of copper and steel, and the other will be just straight steel. As with everything that I do, this will be my interpretation of whatever item or piece it is that I make. I look forward to sharing with you my process. Let's get to the shop and get started. Uh, ye old box of templates. I keep all of the templates that I use for armor, for wooden pieces, for metal pieces of this, that, and the other. You should too. A good friend of mine told me, make sure anytime you're making something that you is a pattern, keep the template. You can expand on it and adjust it uh, in the future. As I've said before in some of my other builds, I keep all sorts of bits and bobs and pieces of metal. Uh, I, I end up using so much of it, so it's a, it's a good practice. And here I'm just having sheet metal, this copper pipe, and various pieces of, of iron rod. I use that angle grinder and that cutoff wheel pretty much on everything that I do that involves metal. I've made metal flowers before. I made them out of copper before. I did, I think, three or four levels of petals using this very template. It came out pretty good. This one I want to make a mixture of steel and copper, and I'm gonna make a second flower that you see uh, that I just started here, and that's gonna be a lily. This will be the base uh, of the petals of the copper flower. Now I'm drawing out the petals on the, the steel. Each flower is gonna have two petals. And then sometimes I use the angle grinder to get these cut started, but I have <laughs> a really old pair of tin snips that uh, took me forever, but uh, it, it, did, it did get it going. And one thing to always remember is to wear gloves when you're cutting things by hand. I don't have the luxury of having lots and lots of money and professional tools uh, here and there. So I have to make the tools that I do have go a long way. And that, like I said, that angle grinder just does so much for me. Uh, and just cutting out the sheet steel, it makes things much faster. And here's what I'll be working with. All of the various petals and uh, leaves and flower blossoms all in one. I was told kindly uh, by a friend of mine that that deburring tool that I keep talking about on my videos from Home Depot is actually called a reamer. So uh, hit this with the reamer. And now I'm just gonna make these little vein patterns in the back of each petal so that it shines through when I start to bend them up. This swage block is something that I spent some money on. It wasn't that much. It was, I think, a couple hundred dollars maybe, but it allows me to make forms and things without having to put too much wrinkle into them on the anvil. And this is the lily that I'll be making. It's almost gonna be made like that spoon. That spoon shape that it's actually in is perfect for rolling it over.
One of my future projects will be to make a lily pattern, but for the lily that has already opened up wide. Those calla lilies that you might see, especially if you're heading towards the coast, uh, anywhere where you'll see them and they're opened up wide. I'll need a much bigger template, but that's something that I'm definitely gonna do. This particular one, the lily will be mostly closed, as you can see. And now I'm making the stems. Uh, this is just your, your basic rod, uh, iron rod, but I am gonna twist it just because I seem to wanna twist <laughs> every piece of metal that I get my hands onto. It gives it personality. It gives it something more to look at just than a regular straight piece of tubing. I've seen a lot of tutorials on how to draw out metal and I'm still really poor at it, but I, this one was okay. I started to draw it out. I need to bring it to a point because I'm going to roll it back over on itself. But here I'm actually going to reverse twist each half. So the top half of this, I twist one particular direction, flip it over as you see here, and then I'm going to reverse twist it about midway through. What that does is it creates a visual break about halfway up the stem. That's where I'm going to put the leaves of this. If I had to do this over, I'd put that break closer to the flower itself. And as our eyes will always tell us, if we think about it hard, most leaves have a little bit of a valley uh, or of a groove in the middle of them going up. And I wanted to make sure I captured that uh, on this. I'd already chopped in with a chisel those, those creases, those vein creases, but I wanted to make sure I put a ridge or a valley up the middle of it using this chisel here. One of the things that I learned on this build, which I guess is, is uh, just a mistake on my part, is that the veins go a particular direction on leaves. If they, if they angle out and upwards, that's going to be this part that goes away from the stem of the flower. And I got that wrong on both of these flowers. They actually angle down towards the stem. Not a big deal, but just something that I noticed was, was improper about how nature works. I guess it would be more accurate to say how nature presents herself. And here I am rolling over those drawn out tips uh, just to create kind of a curly cue on the bottom of this stem. I like the way that looks. It just gives it a little personality. And I'm pretty confident that curly cue is the exact scientific nomenclature that's used when, when talking about these, uh, these plants. Being self-taught, I'm constantly learning new terms, new techniques uh, for things. But when you're smoothing out metal surfaces like this that you've got, uh, brought to a particular form, it's called planishing. And so that's what I was doing there, just trying to get the little lumps and bumps out. Now I'm rounding off the tip of this square rod. It's going to be the that sort of antenna type thing that comes up through the center of the petal on a, on a lily. It's probably, the scientific name is probably stamen, but for some reason, I just sort of want to giggle when I say that as if I'm saying something that's inappropriate, but that's probably what it is. I made this little ball tool that you insert into either the swage block or the anvil just to help with rounding things over. And it was actually a great fit on this. It just sort of rounded everything into a uniform shape and then I could collapse each one of them down a little bit further. And here I'm taking the, the very tips of each petal and I'm uh, beveling it out or rounding it out, I suppose, to give it sort of that look of, of how when the petals climb upwards and inwards, the, the outer extensions of them actually pull out. I think it's something to do with gathering more sun light, but I'm not certain. And this is what it's going to kind of look like. I'm going to close it up a little bit more, but that's the basic idea. Now what I'm doing is I'm going to oil darken all of the pieces of steel. The copper is not going to get that treatment. I want it to be highlighted, but I want the, the, the base of the rest of the materials, the base of the plant, the petals, all to be oil darkened, almost black. And I, I had a big screw up here. This did not go uh, the way that it, it should have gone, which I'll get to later. And I'm just touching it up, making a little weld to get the, the actual lily body onto the stem. And now I'm attaching the leaves. As I said, attached them backwards, but that'll just be between us. I have been instructed quite a bit by people who actually know what they're doing when it comes to welding uh, to clean the metal, the metal surfaces that are going to be welded. It'll make the welds take and look better and not bubble up and be so porous. I did not do that here. These were oil coated and didn't look that great. But as I always tell myself, nothing that a whole lot of grinding and elbow grease can't solve. Now I'm just going to put a little bead of weld straight into the mouth of this flower. I'm going to call it a rose, but straight into this mouth of this rose to get the, the stem and the petals to all be one uniform locked in shape. 
Now, being completely transparent, I did not like the way that oil darkening looked. It, I didn't do it correctly. It was flaking off right and left. So I'm gonna go ahead and paint this with a very deep, flat black uh, paint. So I want the actual look to be a flat black so that the copper and gold accents that I'm gonna put on really, really shine through. And I've never had anybody tell me hitting paint with a heat gun is gonna do anything. It probably didn't help out. It just made me feel like it was going faster so my impatience could, uh, could get assuaged a bit more. Here I'm putting in the shop towels around it so that I can go ahead and hit this with some gold accents. I actually really like the way this came out. It's almost entirely gold, but there's a little bit of copper showing through. I thought it looked pretty good. And then applying the same effect to, oh, look, hey, painter's tape. Look, here's the deal. When I get to the point where I'm finding that I'm using painter's tape, it just is a curse to me that it's, it's another in a long list of bad decisions that I've already made that day. So why not ruin the rest of my day and my project with the attempted inclusion and use of painter's tape? I didn't know how this was going to turn out, uh, but I really liked the way it turned out. I really liked the juxtaposition between flat, uh, featureless black on the outside and then the, the high gold and copper accents. Uh, I thought it turned out really good. I'm pleased with that. Overall, it's not the best flower bodies that I've ever made, but I do like the paint scheme. I like the way it turned out. And yeah, uh, these will be a new addition to my home. Thank you for joining me. That was a fun build. I've made metal flowers before. Each time I've made them, I've tried to make them in different formats or in different form factors, not always using the same exact patterns. The one that came out looking like a lily, that's a pattern that I have used before. The one that had copper in it, it was a new build for me. So for the most part, it was a new build for me. So that, it, it, it came out pretty close to how I wanted it to be. Honestly, before I painted, these items, I gave myself probably about a C, maybe a C plus on the build. There were several areas or pieces that I don't feel like I did super well. And to be quite honest, I was reticent to put on the flat black paint and then touch it up with that gold paint but I like the way it turned out. I think that it looks pretty cool and the accents actually turned out pretty well. I'm sure these will turn into a gift for somebody at, at some point. I don't know exactly who or when or how or what that'll end up being, but um, these sorts of things don't tend to remain long in my shop or in my house. The way that the weapons and the armor that I build tend to. The only thing that I can say safely that I learned was this. Uh, I almost always oil darken the the armor and a lot of the weaponry that i make that protects it from the elements it keeps it from rusting and corroding uh, it's just a good practice that i have to to naturally keep the item protected that said the way that i went about doing it with this just completely did not work it was flaking off here and there i i know why and that is that that i got the item red hot and then i put it in the oil and i didn't really stir it or do anything i just sort of left it kind of there and I have read several times that if you don't stir the item that you're putting in the oil, it tends to have, um, there tends to be like an oxygen oxygenated layer that develops with the oil against the metal and then it can flake off. It doesn't impregnate into the oil the same way. I suspect that's exactly what happened because it was flaking off and therefore I needed to go ahead and, and, and hit it with that flat black spray flat black spray paint. But for the first time, these are these are black flowers with uh, copper and gold accents and I think it looks I think it looks great. So thank you for joining me. Next week I will begin a commission that I received from a friend to make a sort of rack, if you will, for hanging his cycling equipment on, his helmet, his shoes, his keys, his sunglasses, different sorts of things. I'm intrigued by the whole process and how it's gonna turn out. I think it'll turn out pretty interesting. So join me for that next week. Until then, thank you for your support. God bless.